All right. So, hello, everyone. My name is OJ Tucker. Here, joined with uh, Nathan Arroyo. Hello, Nathan Arroyo Long, as Dave Radigan now calls him, because yeah. he wants to make the winner circle more diverse. So instead of adding more people of color, he decided to just change up the last name for Nathan. Uh, we love you, Dave. Uh, <laughs> we are here to discuss the 2022 State of the Film Address. As you probably know, we discussed the 2021 State of the Film Address last year. So this is just like a, a yearly roundup where we just talk about our favorite films of the past year and we'll sort of go our way from there. Uh, so Nathan, uh, how was 2022 in terms of film? Did you really enjoy this year? Was it better than last year? What are your overall thoughts on the state of the film? You know, what? honestly, industry? I'm gonna be honest. I think this well, it was a pretty decent year. I'm not gonna lie. Like most of like the big like pipeline franchise, big money superhero bullshit. Like it was a lot more toned down, and I just felt like. There was just a lot more opportunities for people to just find something, like, you know, a little different to watch. There were a bunch of really just great horror movies that came out, and I really love horror movies. And so I was very happy with kind of the lineup for this year. Yeah, horror films definitely did mm -hmm. play a significant role in today's, oh, and yeah. in, in this year's film uh, industry. Because, again, there was a lot of great horror films, and we'll get to that. Uh, but... I think your overall favorite film of this past year was Barbarian, if you didn't... I think you said that. Yeah, earlier. it's it's in my top three. I, I really love Barbarian. Yeah, there were so many great horror films. I didn't get a chance to watch all of them, no. but just to name a few off the top of my dome, uh, Crimes of the Future, David, directed by David Cronenberg, mm. uh, Barbarian, directed by Zach Kreger, uh, which I just watched, um, Pearl as well. You Pearl. really enjoyed Pearl. X uh, and Pearl. X and Pearl, so yeah, it's like a sequel to X, yeah. I assume. And... There was another one that you enjoyed. Uh, nope. Nope. Jordan okay. Hill, yeah. So we'll discuss Nope. Uh, I didn't really watch too much of it. I didn't watch any of it actually. <laughs> um, but we'll Your discuss it. Changes each and every time. Oh yeah, I've seen it. No, I never watched it. I watched a little bit of it. I didn't watch any. Of it. I mean, I watched the trailer, so I, li I watched a little bit of it. <laughs> that's a that's a little bit of it. I'll give you that. Okay. All right. So let's let's get into our our films for this past year. What films did we watch? Uh, well, the Batman I think was this year too, yes. but we already did a review of. That. We we did a review. You can watch it uh, if you guys want to. It's we we talked about it more in depth, but we'll sort of mm -hmm. give you the abridged version. I enjoyed it. I thought it was yeah. pretty good. But I I'll be honest with you, I felt like that was the catalyst. That film in general was the catalyst for me saying, okay, you know what? I think I'm done with superhero movies. That's fair. Yeah, and it's no. not because like I hate it. It's mm -hmm. not that. I in fact I really enjoyed watching the yeah. film. It's just that I've seen it. I've done it. I'm getting older now. Yeah. It's purely designed to sell toys for children. Why am I succumbing to this? You know, why am I mm -hmm. being a part of this and being a part of this system that just continues releasing these movies when I know that I want to be challenged and when I know that I want yeah. to be seeing different films? I am not against the superhero movies. I'm against the how homogenized they've become which is why the batman is so it's refreshing because it actually feels you know different i mean it's still like a batman movie you know what you're getting with a batman movie it's brooding it's dark it's kind of ridiculous but it takes itself very seriously but like it, it it feels so much out of the way from like the usual fare that we get i'm again like i'm not against the superhero movies like I, I have a monkey brain and I will watch whatever is put in front of my dumb face. But like I, like you said, like as we get older, I'm hoping that like the genre kind of like picks up and is like our audience is getting older. Maybe we should try, you know, to do something new, something darker, maybe more adult, challenge the viewers. But like it's a very slow process. But I'll be honest with you, seeing people within the superhero industry, superhero film industry, like show their ass to the audience is hilarious yeah when you see simu lu crying over scorsese and tarantino for yeah. like crapping on superhero movies that gets me off <laughs> <laughs> that gets me off that gets my rocks hard okay i love it when i see dwayne the rock johnson have to back out of the dceu oh my God. because he can't take mild criticism over a passion project of his it's passion project. passion project. I, I put quotes because i watched black adam and it sucked yeah 
yeah, it, the fact that he like he's now crying because mm-hmm. this is the first time that his PR hasn't been going in his favor is just amazing. And I love to see it. I like to see mental illness in full form. And I think when we see these individuals show their ass to the to the fans and to the film industry, I think it's just great. <laughs> I really do. I really do. I'm so happy for you. I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> it is funny. I remember seeing a Simi Lu tweet uh, in regards to um, the Barbie, the Barbie movie. The Barbie movie. Uh, directed by Greg Gerwig. I can't wait for the Barbie movie. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I, I, I think it's going to be great. The trailer looked pretty good. The good 2001 yeah. Space Odyssey trailer. Mm. But I remember him tweeting saying, saying, see, like he quote tweeted, you know, the trailer saying, see, I can also star in big budget films outside of superhero movies. I'm like, dude, can you be any more insufferable? Can you be any more insufferable than this? Honestly. I, I, th- I think it's time for just, can we burn Twitter down already? Yeah, honestly. I, I, I know, I agree I know it's in the process, but it could be faster. All right. So let's get into our film, shall we? Yeah. I think we, we sort of gave our preamble about the superhero film uh epidemic currently happening in the in, in the in hollywood right now uh but we did watch some films that we really enjoyed uh let's start off with your list what's your what's your list by the way oh yeah no uh, i have a list right here in front of me but we we can just go through your list i just kind of was gonna go through like my top three that right. i really enjoyed the most i'll start with a uh, pearl just pearl. so i can like talk about that and uh x you didn't see x or pearl and didn't watch x or pearl but i hear really good things about it yeah, uh, no. i know it's a 24 related mm-hmm. right yeah so and it was like x comes out and it's like a really solid like throwback to 70s horror exploitation movies it's a really nice tightly woven well-crafted kind of like love letter to that genre but like when i saw the movie it's i like hear beforehand like oh there's something after the credits it's for the sequel pearl which is about like the main villain in x like the origin story it's like that's such a weird it's so weird that's a weird way to advertise like a movie and to like start a franchise, but it's like, okay, I'm with it. I see the trailer for Pearl and it looks crazy, like a Technicolor nightmare. And then I finally see the movie and it really is one of the best movies I've seen this year. Like it's not just a really good like horror movie. It it elevates itself to like like a solid like period thriller that and like when you watch x and pearl together they kind of like both support each other you can watch one or the other first it doesn't matter because you're getting so much from both those experiences and i think that's really a special thing to have especially now like a franchise i guess you could say that doesn't feel cashed in that feels very fresh and it feels like each movie is going to elevate another and they're going to be bringing out the third one which is just called Maxine uh, I think next year and I'm very excited for it I think T- Ty West and Mia Goth did really something very special with those movies I really enjoy how dynamic the horror films have been oh and absolutely, I think this yeah. takes into it where it's like you can be more expansive you mm-hmm. can be more outside of the box yeah it doesn't have to follow the the horror tropes that we've come to know mm-hmm. and appreciate it's, it can be entirely different and yeah. still be a good film. I, I think it was, like, Jason Blum from Blumhouse who said, like, the benefit of doing horror is that it's, like, low risk, high reward. Because they're very, like, they're cheap to make. Yeah, I, yeah. Quote, unquote. I mean, Blumhouse is, like, an architect on, like, taking $5 million projects mm-hmm. and making a profit out of it. Yeah, no. And, like, a lot of the Blumhouse movies, they are, like, very hit and miss. But, like, they show that, like you know give someone a little bit of freedom give them a little bit of leeway and just like give them a small budget because that's all they really need to work with and i just like seeing small budgets and how they're used because i think it really forces a filmmaker to like really you know use all the tools in their toolbox to like really bring something special about and yeah. so yeah, it's been a good year for horror and uh, good year for- X and e- Pearl. And even like the worst horror is still a great comedy. Oh yeah, it's no, still easily. a great comedy. I thi- another movie I saw this year was like Smile. Smile, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard. I, I saw the marketing of it where people were just in like sport sporting events, just smiling. Yeah, no. behind the play, and, and l- just like with this like big sardonic. Smile. It's like it's super cheesy and like kind of bad, but like at the same time, it's like 
better than you would think. Because, mm. like, you see the trailer and it looks like bullshit. It looks like something that would have come out, like, in the early 2000s or, like, 2010s. Just something quick to make a buck that, like, teenagers are going to go see on a weekend. But, like, I go into the movie and it's actually legitimately pretty well crafted it's like still kind of like a kitschy cheesy like uh oh if you see the smile you you die in a week it's like that kind of like cheesy trope but like the way it's crafted it's like really atmospheric like slow moving like dark and like kind of cynical and like again but like it still has that like cheesy edge because like then someone will just smile at the screen like eh. it's like that's just objectively funny but again like it shows like what you can do like with just a little bit of imagination you can elevate something like above where it stands yeah that's that's, that's very true uh was that your first one right the yeah pearl? x pearl, pearl i threw in smile in there what's like, that's your number two uh, I'd say that's like my number three in my number three. Game. Okay, then what's your number two? My number two would be uh, I'm gonna say Nope. Nope. Uh, Jordan Peele. Nope. I know you didn't see it, and I know <laughs> I know you don't really want to see it. I don't want to see it, honestly. Um, here's the thing with Jordan Peele. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think if this was any other director, right? <laughs> if this was M Night Shyamalan, and then if M Night Shyamalan directed Nope, it would be lambasted by critics. It would be considered a horrible film. And this is coming from a guy that did not watch Nope. All right. This is coming from a guy that did not watch Nope. And I think in a lot of ways, I think that just because and I and I see this very this trend within horror films where they add social commentary to horror films. And I think that's a great thing. I mean, there are some great films that have done that. A Barbarian is a great sort of takedown on like the Me Too culture. And it does a really good job at depicting that in ways that I don't really see other films doing that. So I really enjoy the trend of horror films taking on social trends and social commentary. But I think with Jordan Peele, I think it's just so baked on. It's so like heavily hammed in where people sort of see it and think that just because something is sort of hinted at, it's like this big sort of critique on our like racial racial tensions going on in, in the world. And I think it's just like for me when I watch the film and when I not well, when I watch Nope, because I haven't watched Nope, I don't want to crit critique too much on Nope. But when I see other films by Jordan Peele, uh, and I like Jordan Peele. I want to say Key and Peele are a great sketch group. I think they're funny. I think there's some really good uh, sketches from Key and Peele. But I think that when we watch a Jordan Peele film, I think people sort of take that into account. And instead of viewing it in a very sort of film perspective, it's like, okay, well, we got to watch it with this perspective. Otherwise, you know, people may think of it in a different way If you get if you catch my drift. I don't know if you, uh, people may disagree with me on that. Obviously, I know it's not the most popular opinion, but I do think that in a lot of ways that some just because something is like hinted at that may depict an ongoing trend doesn't mean that it's good per se. Okay. Did you get it out of your system? Yeah. Okay. I can I totally get where you're coming from. Like I watched Us recently, his second movie, and I can definitely see where you're coming from where it feels like the like underlying sort of subtext almost takes over the entire movie yeah, like we get it racism it. is bad like is we bad. understand <laughs> we understand that idea don't, we understand that concept don't say slurs kids it's not depending on the context of it but all. i feel uh, like uh, with that's... nope i think he finally found like a really good balance between like the actual story happening and like the subtext the subtext doesn't take over the movie it's still mm -hmm. there and like you can watch it for that but i think the movie itself can still stand on its own and i just found it a really unique experience i found it a very well crafted like sci-fi thriller the movie it it kind of takes on like a couple different sort of i guess genres almost like it starts off like as a bit of like a moody kind of like sci-fi uh, horror and as it goes along it becomes almost like this weirdly bombastic kind of like big almost like action movie like by the third act and like you could argue and like I've seen the argument made that it makes the movie feel kind of bloated which is definitely fair it's a long movie and it definitely feels long how long is the movie it's like a little over two hours, but like it, for a horror film, that's, that's a lot. it definitely feels long. But I don't know. So the pacing wasn't that great, you would say. 
I'd say if you wanted to point out something that wasn't great, I'd say the pacing. The pacing's not great, but I feel like... And that third act in particular wasn't that great. The, yeah, no. The third act drags, which is, like, something that, like, I see in just a lot of movies in general is, like, always it's hard to land that third act. But I think regardless, I thought it was just a really great, I guess, adventure to go on. I saw it in IMAX, and the use of sound in the movie is absolutely astonishing. The sound design is beautiful and the way it's shot they did like the weird like day for night where like everything at night has like this weird blue kind of hue and it looks just beautiful and i really appreciate it because it feels like i watched this movie and i could see jordan peele like kind of really flexing his muscles as a director it feels still like in that same vein as his last two movies but there's something about it that just feels bigger. And like when a director is given the opportunity to do something bigger, like it's very easy for them to fall flat on their face. But I feel like he really managed it very well. I think uh, the best description I've heard for this movie is it's basically Jaws, but like with an alien in the sky. And I think that's a really good comparison. It's basically like a contemporary space Jaws is how yeah. I'll say, and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to watch an actual horror film w <laughs> with a good alien story arc, go watch Signs. Go watch Signs. It's honestly my favorite Shyamalan film. Uh, so those are your three, right? It's Pearl, a Nope, uh, Barbarian. Barbarian. Yeah. You didn't talk about Barbarian. I just watched it. I honestly think... Can I get my overthoughts? thoughts? Yeah, anything? go ahead. Go All right, so, so with Barbarian, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good film. Uh, there were times where I just laughed uncontrollably. Uh, there was this part where, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but spoiler alert, uh, where at the end of the, like, in the third act, there was like, this homeless black person oh, yeah. uh, who tries to help out the main protagonist, the girl, and the, the dude who was also uh, trapped in the basement. And he's like, you know, this this monster, I've been living here for 15 years, this monster doesn't even know where I am. And all of a sudden... Oh, no. No, I love that scene. He's like, I've been living here for 15 years. She ain't never coming to this motherfucker. And then immediately, as the word motherfucker leaves <laughs> leaves his mouth, the giant fucking like woman bursts through the fucking wall and beats him to death with his own arm. It's great, bro. I really, I, Zach Kreger, I think the white kid, whitest kids you know. That's yeah, great. from the whitest kids you know. He does a great job at balancing comedy and horror, but still adding that horror element, mm -hmm. which is very, very difficult when you're tackling a horror film yeah. it's very easy to be going from horror into comedy but it's very very difficult to balance the two acts mm -hmm. to ba balance the two uh, ideas it's, it's hard to make sure that like your audience is having fun and laughing at the jokes you put in but also trying to get them back into that sense of like tension yes you know? exactly perfect way of, of explaining it it's very very difficult to make the audience still invested in your characters when you just added a comedic joke into your horror film and i think zach Kreger does a great job of depicting that uh overall i thought it was a good horror film i don't think it's that great uh i feel like there's a lot of horror tropes that are still in it i think it, a lot of it is still like a home homage to horror film so I, I think that's part of it uh but overall i thought it was a good film um it's on the short end so go watch it if you haven't seen it already i wouldn't go as far as to say it's like one of my favorite films of, of the year but i can understand the argument for why someone would believe in that this is definitely my favorite movie. It's your of favorite the film year. of the year. Okay, yeah, go, go explain it. I really want to hear your. Yeah, thoughts no, on uh, I knew nothing about. This is a movie I went into like almost completely blind. The only reason I did go to see it was because like I don't know. I'm looking at the director. I'm looking at who's in it. I'm like, oh, Bill Skarsgård, Justin Long. I like these guys. I wish Bill Skarsgård was in it more. I wish he didn't die. <laughs> he, he is great, but like I I kind of love like what they do with him. But then I see Zach Kreger, and I'm like, oh, why just did you know? Oh my god. Another like, uh, like sketch comedy guy turned horror director. I I really want to see this. And then I go into the movie, and like, it's it's just such a strange movie because I feel like the only way to watch it is completely blind. Mm. And so like, if you made it this far, we've spoiled too much, and I apologize for that. 
but I think. But the, we're recapping this year's films. Like, what do you expect? Like, you we're, true. And we're not like trying to like make two videos. You where did one's, this to yourself. We're not trying to make two videos where we have like a, a review and then like yeah, an yeah. actual actual review mm. where we have a spoiler review and like it's just like we're yeah. not we're not making any money out of this. Okay, yeah, like don't expect, we're not making any money out of this. We're just doing this for your mere entertainment value. Yeah. Okay. Uh so yeah, overall you liked Barba- uh, Barbarian. I absolutely loved it. I thought the way it was like. Everything was set up from, like, the beginning where she goes to the Airbnb with Bill Skarsgård. And that, like, first, like, 40 minutes are so, so well-paced and well done. It's, like, just pure tension throughout. Only for, like, it to be completely recontextualized, like, by the end of the first act where, like, you know, spoilers, Bill Skarsgård gets his fucking head crushed in by the giant inbred mother living in the basement i think what's special about this movie for me is that it's able to like recontextualize itself like several different times like you have the first half where it's like the girl in the airbnb maybe bill skarsgård is a creep we don't really know what's going on and then we see there's a basement underneath does bill skarsgård know about it what is this entire like tunnel system underneath the house oh my god now he's dead so obviously he wasn't the villain and then on a dime movie cuts to black and then we start following Justin Long for some reason. And, like, his whole who story... Who was fired from... Who was fired from, like, Sexual improprieties. Yeah, no, in, in the movie, he's, like, fired, and he's, like, accused of sexual assaults, which, like, becomes, like, a theme in the movie about, like, uh, kind of, like, that... The tension between, like, men and women. Yeah, Kind of, yeah. like, in that regard. I-, I feel like if this movie came out after 2017... Like after like the Me Too movement, I think this would be viewed as like one of the best films of all time. It so sh- this this would be viewed as be. as like oh this is like a future Oscar uh, contender. Like this, is... I know you're joking, but I unironically believe that. Please. I mean, I believe in it as well. I think that's going to be like yeah. that. That would have been the case if Zach Kreger made this film two or three years before and really caught like the the moment of that time. I feel like this would be like a perfect time capsule for that time period Mm. and this would be viewed in like the same vein as like get out yeah oh absolutely but yeah i love this movie it's very well crafted it recontextualizes itself it strikes up the perfect balance between like absolutely fucking horrifying and completely unhinged and hilarious i think that's kind of the sense i got watching it is that some of this shit is so ridiculous that you could tell that zach Kreger was just taking like an absolute piss out of everything and it really does feel like a throwback i think uh one of the like comparisons i saw is it felt like a like an early Wes craven movie like like Mm. people under the stairs like kind of like a domestic horror just turned up to 11 and it's absolutely my favorite movie that i saw this year Nice, nice. So those are your top three. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't have a top three. Yeah. But I'll just list off some movies like off the top of my brain, mm-hmm. off the top of my head that I really enjoy. Uh, I think one of the films that really came in and, and really made it shook, uh, really shook things up a bit in the film industry, I think was RRR. RRR. I think it was a really great film, three hours long. I know it's uh, it's quite long for today's mm-hmm. like social media generation yeah. where everything has to be captioned and clipped and everything has to be on YouTube Shorts and mm-hmm. Instagram Reels. So it's a little bit long. I understand that, but it's a really good film. Um, and I think it details about two individuals that are like best friends have to go through like the British Raj. And overall, I really just enjoyed the overall chemistry that th- those two actors had on screen. I really enjoyed the the storytelling that the director SS Rajamali put in. And I think it really made things a little bit more bigger for the foreign film market. And I think we saw that through Parasite and I think RR is just taking it where it left off in a lot of ways. So RR is a really good film. Go watch it already. I think that this is a good sign that films outside of the Hollywood industry can succeed and do well. And I think it's it, if it inspires individuals to watch more foreign films, then I think that's just great. So RRR, great film. Um, go watch it. Um, again, I, I it's not really like it's been a few months since I last watched it, so it's it's hard for me to really dig deep into like the plot of it. So maybe that's great for you if you're watching that. I'm not really you know describing it too much, but overall RRR, great film. Go watch it. Uh, another film that I really enjoyed, and this may come as a shock to some people, but Top Gun. 
Really? I thought Top Gun was a great film. And I know people don't want to hear it because I know I w- rattled a little too hard on superhero films and this is like a big budget film. And yeah. A lot of people think that just because it's big budget, I might hate it. You're wrong. I think big budget films are great. And if it's done in a tasteful way, in an authentic, original way, I think that we should support it and applaud it. And I think yeah. Tom Cruise is showing himself to be one of the biggest stars of our generation in, in Hollywood in general. Yeah, he's been a star for fucking years. I, I think he's been drinking the Scientology blood that keeps him young. Yeah, yeah, he's drinking the Scientology blood. He's but again, if that film almost convinced me to be a Scientologist, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Honestly, like I saw Tom Cruise just like doing all these flips and jumps and all that stuff, and I'm like, dude. Scientology might not be that bad at the end of the day. <laughs> Once you get like up if, to the if, higher if levels. Being, if being Tom Cruise, if, if being a Scientologist means you're Tom Cruise, you get easy access to any film you want to be in. You get the greatest scripts of all time. You're considered to be one of the biggest bleeding men in Hollywood and, and, and one of the best in your craft. Then by all means, I might want to be a Scientologist. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I might want to be a Scientologist. But yes, uh, Top Gun was a great film. I thought they did the story in a very simplistic way, but still gave you the thrills and the chills that, you know, was sort of lacking in that first Top Gun. Mm. And the fact that it grossed over a billion dollars, I think that's great. Uh, Again, it it brought people out to the movie theaters. Mm. And when we saw Spider-Man No Way Home, that was like, everyone's like, oh, that's what brought people to the movie theaters. I'm like, no, this should be getting much more praise than Spider-Man No Way Home. Because this is not baked into Marvel. This is not like, a, you know, a, I know it's a it's a remake of the first one, whatever. It's a continuation, a sequel to the first one. But still, it's not like this big universe, all right? It's just this one movie where it's just bros have, being bros, you know, having New, Republic, New Republic's Ein Worried playing while they're playing football. It's just great. I love it. It's, it's a great film. A very simplistic plot, but still gets the job done. I think that this is a film... That we will watch and be like, you know what, 2022 wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't a bad year. It wasn't like 2021 or 2020 where everything was doom and gloom. 2022 had some upsides to it. And Top Gun really exemplified that to a T. So, yeah, Top Gun is my... I, again, it's not like... I'm not rattling off like th- like top three best films of this past year. Because, again, I don't feel like this year was that great in terms of films. Fair enough. Uh, I, th- I thought 2021 was a little bit better. Uh, but overall, uh, go watch Top Gun if you haven't seen it, if you live on a rock. Uh, another film that I really enjoyed, and again, this is not in any order, uh, but Vengeance. This is the BJ Novak film. Oh, my God. I think I mentioned to you at a winter circle. Yeah, you um, did. You did? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, Vengeance is directed by BJ Novak. It details about this Brooklyn podcaster that wants to have a better understanding of this southern family uh he his ex-girlfriend or supposed ex-girlfriend he only like saw her for, for like a few days or a few weeks uh mysteriously passes away and the family thinks that somebody murdered her but in fact it was because of dr- drug addiction and it's basically documents bj novak trying to get a better sense of this family and and the whereabouts of this family and it's just a great tale i really thoroughly enjoyed it it is I think that this is a film that you watch and you're like, you know what? There's a lot of unity in this world. Hmm. You know, we may live in different worlds. We may live in Brooklyn or we may live in Texas. But at the end of the day, we still have that sort of sympathy and empathy for one another. And I thought this, I thought BJ Novak did a great job at depicting that. Uh, There was this one scene that I wasn't that big of a fan of, which was at the Whataburger, uh, at the like, the parking lot of Whataburger where he he just scolds the family. I'm like, okay, this seems a little too baked on hemmed in uh but overall i thought it was great the opening shot is of bj novak and john mayer uh talking about dating apps and relationships and i'm like okay where is this going to because i love john mayer but i'm like is this going to be like another like rom-com sort of thing and it's like no (laughs) it's not it's it's a good film uh go watch vengeance it's it's a very good film uh really depicts sort of middle american in in a great way uh, but yeah, I just really enjoyed the culture shock that was in the film for BJ Novak's character. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Vengeance, another great film. Let's. So we talked about our favorite films of this past year. Let's talk into some films that we may have watched, enjoyed, didn't really enjoy. We, we'll sort of pick and choose. Um, so let's go go right down the list. A film that came out earlier this past year mm. uh, that got a little bit of notoriety, but I th- thought it sort of got swept under. Notoriety. Yeah. Uh, the Northman. The Northman. Huh. It came out this year. What what was the notoriety around it? Not notoriety. Wrong choice of words there. But it got some attention. Mm -hmm. 
And then it sort of quickly swept, got swept under the rug. Yeah. I, I saw The Northman. It's a good film. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I really enjoyed it and I liked it, but I don't think... I guess it's hard if you're Robert Eggers and like you come out with The Witch, which is absolutely perfect, and then you come out with The Lighthouse, which goes even higher... It's like that film's awesome. Bro. Where do you go from there? And then you go with the Northman, which isn't. It's like it's not an A twenty four movie, and like I guess he had a lot of problems with like the distributor. He didn't get like final say over the final cut or something like that, which just makes me like, where's the Eggers cut? But um, you could definitely feel it was a lot different from what he's made before, and it's still very good. It still has his style and just like the ambiance he creates it's like it i guess it's dumb to say but like the movie just feels very cold which makes sense because it's vikings yeah very gladiator inspired yeah very gladiator inspired red letter media did a great job at showing the comparisons and contract uh, and con- con- tra- contrasting you know qualities of both Northman and Gladiator, so mm-hmm. go watch their video. Uh, but yeah, it, it's very, very much similar to Gladiator in a yeah, lot of ways. It, which isn't a bad thing, but I just feel like the opening hours of that movie, or like the first act, I think is absolutely perfect. But then after that, it doesn't get worse, it just slows down substantially. Like, we get like the, like, uh, Alexander Skarsgård, like, his story of why he wants revenge, we get him, like, and he's just a, he's just a brute, and he's just raiding villages, that raid that's mm-hmm. near the start of the movie is stellar, but then, like, once the actual revenge plot, like, takes hold, I think the movie actually slows down, because most of the movie, we're just kind of stuck in like just one village yeah for the rest of it and so and again none of it's bad it just feels slower and it feels less like bombastic especially compared to robert eggers other movies which feel like a constant ramp up of tension until a big explosion northman is like it starts off massive it starts off big the explosions in your face but then it kind of peters down a bit i think not bad but still i I remember like the first few like viewings of it like the first few weeks of the movie coming out everyone's like this is one of the best films of of the year Mm -hmm. this is going to be in like the top 10 of all of of this past year's list and then as the months go on everyone's just kind of forgot about it it's interesting but uh there is another film that you watch. I didn't watch. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh yeah, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. I think everyone became obsessed with this movie. Everyone is still obsessed with this movie. Really? People are still obsessed with everything. I think people are still obsessed with this movie, and I love. I'll it. be honest with you. I think this is in the same vein as Northman, or like Ooh. everyone's like everyone was talking about it when it came mm-hmm. out, and then it sort of died down. Like that's something that I realized about it, like our generation is like nothing stays. We have a short attention span. Yeah. Nothing stays. Like, you mm. could release one of the best pieces of art ever, and then it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, everyone's attention span is too short, because it's like, oh my god, this is amazing. I have this now, but I'm also looking for, like, what's the next big, th- what's the next popular thing? Yeah, it's it's hard to make art that sticks. Mm-hmm, yeah. But do you enjoy the everything, everyone all I really enjoyed it. I really loved it. I think I prefer the Daniels' first movie, Swiss Army Man. Mm-hmm. I prefer it. Over oh yeah, everything. that was with uh, Radcliffe and Radcliffe Dano? and uh, Paul Dano. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that movie. I prefer it over Everything Everywhere All at Once. But I still really enjoy Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think it's got such a great imagination and a great energy to it. And it's and it, when you think about that, it's no wonder that people gravitated so closely towards it. And I'm happy that it got so much buzz because it was so out there and wacky and different and you could tell that a lot of people just really enjoyed it and it's really nice when something you know so out of pocket so just out there gets attention like that and like attention it deserves it makes me feel like ah we've still got taste yeah yeah i mean it's good i mean 
I mean, I didn't watch it, so I don't want to give my overall thoughts on it. Yeah. But the fact that people are going for or- original films mm. nowadays is a good break. Yeah. It's oh, a very good break. Easily. And I'm just so happy that we're just past this. I feel like everyone has MCU superhero fatigue. Yeah. I, f- I sense it radiating. Yeah. I see it a lot. I when think- I see individuals mm. side with Scorsese and Tarantino, I think we're on a good path. I think it's people just sick of, like, tent whole franchises and sick of movies that are unable to stand on their own without like the oh it's gonna be the next big thing in the dc it's gonna be the next big thing in marvel oh people still give a shit about harry potter can we make some more harry potter movies yeah very true and uh, you also letterboxd any any other movies you watch oh let's see because there's some films that i didn't watch but i'm a, I, I assume you watched them uh ooh. Here's something that we both watched. Oh, don't worry, don't, darling. Don't worry, darling. Oh, yeah, we watched an AMC. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was crazy. I don't oh want to disclose God. the location uh, because I disclosed the location last year. <laughs> and you yelled at me. Uh, but yeah, overall, don't worry, darling. Pitiful. Awful. Yeah. A horrible, horrible uh, film. I wouldn't go that far. You're not wrong. I wouldn't go that far as to say it's horrible, horrible. I'd go as far as to say it's just middling and just boring. It's a kind of cool concept. We need to stop letting singers think they can act. All right? Harry Styles (laughs) is a horrible actor. I'm sorry. I mean, first off, I don't get why mm. women find him attractive. That's one thing. I mean, he's receding. He, he's suffering through male pattern bald, baldness, and he's, like, shying away from it. So I, I don't. that's up to him. But, I mean, come on. Like, honestly, not. we have to realize that not everyone is Jamie Foxx. All right? Not everyone has the ability to sing and also act. All right? Harry Styles is a horrible actor. Case in point, he's a horrible actor. And this film exemplified that. When you see him in that car, oh yeah, just like mm. emotional and being like, being like, f- like, f- like you know, swearing and like, uh, like honking his horn. I'm like, dude, this is just bad. <laughs> this is just bad. What what did I come here to see? If Nick Kroll is the best part of your film, if Nick Kroll, the guy whose dad like probably did 9/11, is the best part of your film, you you messed up. If I could play devil's advocate just for a second. I'm not going to say that Harry Styles is a bad actor. He's, gonna, he's not a good actor. He's not a good actor. He's not a bad... He's definitely the kind of guy who he'd be in, like, a Marvel movie and he'd be fine because that doesn't require, like, any, like, big show of emotion. It just requires someone to just stand there, look pretty, and be like, oh, look at me, I'm charming. Ooh. It's like he's that kind of guy. He can play, like, charming kind of man boy that's that's his strength he can't the role in that movie like opposite Florence Pugh that required like nuance that required the ability to like be charming but also like underneath it have kind of like a sinister vibe and maybe like a conflict some anger some sadness but like he, he can't do that yeah it's just it's just a bad film don't watch it honestly I I, I really wanted to watch it not because i knew it was going to be good but because i thought it would be interesting at least Mm -hmm. and it's just not it's just nothing there nothing is there in the movie but anyways that's that those are my thoughts on don't worry darling any other films that you watch uh we watched the batman you we already discussed it we're not gonna the batman did you ever watch men alex garland I heard about it, and I really want to watch it. I really, really wanted to watch it because I I loved Annihilation. Yeah. Oh, my God. Annihilation is still one of the... uh, Mm -hmm. Talking about a film that's, like, like with women characters that actually does a great job at depicting women and depicting women's strength, go watch Annihilation over Don't Worry Darling, okay? Annihilation does a great job without making it sort of, like, baked on Mm -hmm. and hammed in. So go watch Annihilation over Don't Worry Darling. But anyways, Alex Garland is a great director. Yes. I did not watch this film, but I hear okay things about it. Mixed Men, reviews on it. I'd say I would recommend Men to any. <laughs> it's so funny to say I recommend Men. <laughs> I would recommend the movie Men to anybody just because it's a very unique experience. Coming out of the theater the first time, I didn't love it. I would be hard pressed to say whether I even liked it. But, like, even when I say that, I don't hate it. I appreciate 
a lot of it, I appreciate that Alex Garland is willing to just go so wild and so cerebral with his movies and just like pretty much give a middle finger to the audience and be like, figure out, figure it out for yourself, bro. Sorry if I put a middle finger. It's still not it's a swear, fine. though. Yeah, no worries. You're good, bro. You're good. I mean, whatever. It's it's past the 36-minute mark. So okay, great. Anyways, uh, you liked men? I... <laughs> Pause. Pause. <laughs> Pause. I, I would recommend men to really anyone who even has a little bit of interest in seeing it. All right. It's a, it's a much, it's like a, it's like a who's on first situation where like, we're like, who's on first? <laughs> I think everyone is going to have a different kind of situation with men. All right. Cool. Cool. It's a, it's like, I remember I was watching, uh, somebody was recommending, I think you should leave. Mm-hmm. And they were saying, they're telling me, dude, I, you should definitely do. I think you should leave. I think you should leave is great. And I'm like, do you really think I should leave? <laughs> so bad, bro. I'm like, this is so. I'm such a klutz about it. Anyways, so you recommend men? Any other films you watched? Uh, uh, uh oh, you you watched uh, Blonde? I I tried to watch Blonde. Yeah, I heard it's not that great. Did my best. It is just. It's one of the. It's kind of like Don't Worry, Darling, where like everything else surrounding the movie is much more interesting than the movie itself. Like Andrew Dominic just kind of being a big dick about it, mm. and kind the of like yeah, when you when you watch it with the sense that he basically just wanted to make this weird sadomasochistic like misery porn about Marilyn Monroe, you watch the movie and you're like, that's exactly what this is. It's it was just a very confusing watch because it's just miserable. But I feel like without any reason for it to be miserable, Mm -hmm. it just feels like sadness for the sake of sadness. Mm -hmm. And then Ana de Armas takes her shirt off. And it's like, well, now it's just creepy. Yeah, it's weird. I feel like you're you're making a profit out of Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. And you're not really adding any reverence or or appreciation for what she's done. Instead, you're just making money out of her and making a profit out of her and not really taking her family or her or her work into consideration no yeah it's it's very exploitative but yeah what other films do you watch uh I don't let, know. Me, let me see let me see. feels like i don't know it feels like right. i kind of watched that's really all i watched that's all i watched i watched the hellraiser remake the hellraiser remake yeah. oh you watch babylon no, there's just a list of movies. Oh, there's a list of to. movies. Okay, okay, no worries. Oh, do you watch Ambulance? I hear it's Michael Bay. I did not watch Ambulance, although I was interested. How about Elvis? Do you watch Elvis? I did not watch. Did you watch Elvis? No, I didn't watch Elvis. I wish I would. I really wish I did watch Elvis though. But how about it. Emily the Criminal? I, I hear that's a good film. I also hear that I didn't watch. It. You didn't watch it? Okay, I'm we're sorry. so okay. I thought you were you would be you would be the movie guy. What? I, know, I, right? I was relying on you to be the movie, movie guy. guy. You were. All right. How about Tar? Tar? I didn't watch that either. B- Bones and all? Bones and all. I need to see it. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're so well prepared for this. <laughs> As always. As, As always. always. Uh, Bones and all. Uh, how about what other films? I have some films on here. Yeah, no, it. please. Um, yeah. Uh, on the Count of Three. I watched oh, On the Count of Three. I should have watched that. It's directed by Gerard Carmichael. It depicts an individual who's on his last days who is thinking about committing suicide and him and his friend decide that they'll have one good day together. And it turns into a essentially a, a murder sort of... I mean, I don't want to re- spoil it, but it's an hour and 30 minutes long around around that time where essentially Gerard Carmichael and his friend spend one last day together and essentially they commit some crimes, some very bad crimes. And overall, I really enjoyed it. It's very difficult to talk about mental health and mental illness that isn't just a psa Mm -hmm. that isn't just mental health is 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 important go checked out get checked out i felt like draw carmichael did a really good job at putting a concerted effort and putting comedy into this film Mm -hmm. and there are times where the tones don't don't really match out but i think it overall helps out the film in a lot of ways and when you take into account that this is his directorial debut i think he did a pretty solid good job at it and this is a film that I was surprised to be seen on Hulu. You can watch this on Hulu. It's a Disney-owned company, so the fact that they're that Disney's like having this film that shows suicide is just crazy to think about. 
But overall, I thought this was a great film. I recommend it for my weekly pick, and I think it's still a great film to watch. On the Count of Three is a great watch. Uh, go watch it. It's it's just it's just all you want to watch when you think about like a heist. It's like a buddy cop film, but with like a little bit more of a darker tone to it. I just thought because you said Hulu, um, Prey. Prey. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, the Predator. I almost forgot about it, which is a shame because it's really solid, and I I love it so much i think it's the first time i've seen where like someone is able to like take a worn out and beaten franchise like like predator and inject some life into it and make just a solid action movie that that lines up so well with the first predator predator and prey are are just a really good like back-to-back watch as like a double feature praise such a solid movie with such a great kind of setup like alien hunter but it's in like like a native kind of like village going through the motions of like his rampage and uh, amber mid thunder as the lead is just she's absolutely perfect as this action lead it's really well made and dan trachtenberg who made it he made uh directed 10 cloverfield lane he's that was on netflix right yeah i hear that not so great things about it wait 10 cloverfield lane no i think you're thinking of cloverfield paradox oh cloverfield 10 paradox. cloverfield lane oh that's a good film. was like john goodman mary elizabeth winstead that's a good fucking movie and like dan trachtenberg is a director who i want more of but the world will not give us any more of him yeah but like when he's allowed to direct, he really shines. And so Prey is another movie I highly, highly recommend you watch. All right, let's get into those superhero films because let's be honest. Oh, here. really? We want to talk about those? I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to talk about it because I didn't. I just watched <laughs> Batman. But again, it's the YouTube algorithm. If sure, I put in yeah. the keywords Marvel or DC, I'm sure it'll get views or not. No, no, no views, whatever. But you watch some Marvel DC films. Fucking. Did I even? I don't remember what I watched. You watched Black Adam. I watched Black Adam. That movie's garbage, but like it's entertaining garbage at least. Let me look at the 2022 superhero films. So yeah. explain your thoughts on 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 uh, Black Adam because I really want to hear it. Now. Black Adam is basically everything that every superhero movie has been up until this point is what is in all of Black Adam. It is just a CGI, big action cluster fudge that will pretty much give you a migraine for, like, a good two hours. But, like, I watched, like, halfway through the movie, I'm like, this is painful. I'm gonna start drinking now. And then I had such a better time with it. It's a weird movie because... The only reason The Rock is still making movies is because he at the very least has like a natural charisma to him where it's like, I don't hate this guy, but the whole point of Black Adam is that Black Adam is just a big piece of shit and he's just very rude and unfunny everywhere he goes and then that's the movie. And it's like, you couldn't even do the one thing The Rock has going for him. Yeah, so the Black Adam he didn't enjoy. Uh... I enjoyed it ironically, is ironically. what I'll say. All right, cool, cool. I, I just love this. That, this is my fetish, okay? This is my fetish. It's just trashing superhero yeah. movies. All right. There, there's another film that is also bad that I'm surprised you didn't talk about, but it also came out this year. That's a superhero film. Are you going to say Morbius? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I laugh every time I hear about that movie. <laughs> it's Morbin time. <laughs> it's Mor- Morbin time right now. It's such a it's such a it's such a goddamn joke at this point. It's not a real movie. Who was the guy that was dancing? Uh Matt Smith, who later went on to like and he was good. He was good in uh, the the Anya Taylor Joy. Anya Taylor. Oh Joy yeah, film. he was good in Last Night in Soho. And then like after Morbius, he went on to be the best part of House of the Dragon on HBO. But like, ugh, it's, Morbius is not a movie worth experiencing ever for anyone, even in an ironic sense. Like I'm just gonna watch this to laugh at it. It's not even bad enough to laugh at. It's just a miserable like hour and 40 minutes that feels like three hours 
of Jared Leto pretending he's a person and not a sex in, cult and not <laughs> a, a sex cult leader that drinks the blood of children. Right. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. We don't want to get sued here by Jared Leto. I want to get, come at me, Jared. I actually liked him in Requiem for a Dream. I think he's a good actor, but I just think that... <laughs> he's a good actor, but like when you just have Jared Leto just as himself and you're trying to be like, he's a charming leading man, it's like, no, he's not. He's creepy. Yeah. He's a scary motherfucker. Yeah, he's a he's a scary person, honestly. Uh, so he didn't li- not like Morbius at Yeah, all? No, I wouldn't suggest more then they try to, to release anyone. it back into theaters yeah because it became a meme and sony was dumb enough to be like it's a meme now that means people like it uh, apparently they only made like sixteen thousand dollars back no. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my favorite joke that came from like the second release was someone be like sony please release it a third time <laughs> yeah, I we were all I saw busy. that too i saw that too it was crazy Honestly, Morbius, I mean, I just enjoy people. This is, again, what I was referring to is that I think the tide is now turning on superhero films. And it's a great thing. It's a great thing. I mean, it doesn't help that Sony is on this weird kind of kick of, like, we have all these, like, Spider-Man characters, but we don't have Spider-Man, so we're just going to make a movie about the Spider-Man villains. So we'll make a movie about... Morbius, and we'll make a movie about Craven the Hunter or yeah. something. I, I remember I watched Venom. I'm like, okay, this movie is bad. Yeah. But I enjoy at it. At the very least, you can laugh at Venom. Yeah. There's entertainment value. When you hear the Eminem Venom. song, Venom, Venom. You, you laugh at it because the song is trash. Yeah. And, uh, but overall, Venom, I enjoyed because I just looked at the absurdity of it all. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is just. This is purely for like a fun, like it's a pure entertaining watch. I won't mm-hmm. defend it to anybody, but it's a pure entertaining watch. Yeah. Then they tried to double down on it with the Venom remake. And now they're tri- remake. Oh, do you mean like uh, sequel. a sequel? Venom Carnage. Sequel. Yeah. Let yeah. there be Carnage. Yeah. And now they release uh, Morbius. I'm like, okay, now you know that these films are trash. Now it's time why are you releasing stop. it for people to watch into theaters? I think I think my favorite like rumor about the next like Sony Marvel movie that they're making is a. El Muerto, which is supposed to be a Spider-Man villain. Not even a famous Spider-Man villain. To my knowledge, he's been in maybe like two Spider-Man stories, and he's just a luchador wrestler with a magical luchador mask. I don't know if that's right. It probably isn't. I hope it's not. I didn't do any research, but I think the guy that they wanted to get for it was Bad Bunny. Hmm. Oh, yeah, so they want to capture the Hispanic audience, I assume. I'm half Hispanic, so half of me is intrigued. <laughs> At least you got that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so overall, uh, Morbius was... Uh, is It exists. It exists. Go watch it. Good job for Morbius for existing. And another film that came from the MCU, Doctor Strange. Oh, and the Multiverse of Madness. Sam Raimi directed yeah, a film. They, they dug up the corpse of Sam Raimi to make this movie. If this film came out like 10 years ago, I would be like so pumped for it. Yeah. Like if I was if I was like a middle schooler, high schooler, and if I just came off from like the high of the Sam Raimi trilogy, I'll be like, dude, I'm going to watch it. But it doesn't matter how many Marvel movies you put out. I'm just... I'm just too old now. I'm I'm too old to be interested in, t- in watching superhero movies that are solely designed to sell toys to children. I can't do it. <laughs> I you, can't do it. Let, okay, let's be honest. These toys that are being sold, kids aren't buying them. 20 to 30-year-old men are buying them. Yeah, if we just turned the camera around, you would just see Nathan Arroyo's comic book collection. You'd be like, yeah, he, he's a yes boy. I am the... Uh, kids are buying these. It's me. Yeah, he, I'm kids. He's kid. he the kid. I am a kid in the... Did inside. you enjoy Doctor Strange? No. Even with my big lizard brain, which will, like, just watch anything, like, that just looks like, ooh, laser beams. Even this movie, like... I feel like at this point... These MCU movies are, like, failing at even the basics of, like, storytelling, like, a three-act structure with a rising action, conflict, a climax, a falling action, an ending. It feels like they're failing on even this degree. I have no idea what Benedict Cumberbatch's motivation is in the entire movie. 
Elizabeth Olsen is the villain and you won't understand why she's the villain or why she's doing what she's doing unless you watched WandaVision on Disney Plus. I watched WandaVision on Disney Plus. I don't I hear remem- it's good. I hear it's good. It was I, I want to give MCU their credit. I hear WandaVision is good. So. It was fine at the time, but then like 5 months later when I see Multiverse of Madness, I'm like what is even happening? Why do I care? I think the plot of the movie is like Doctor Strange needs to protect a small child and Wanda wants to eat the small child for because she misses her kids, I guess. And like, there's some fun stuff in it. Like, obviously, Sam Raimi was allowed to do fun stuff with the camera because it's got the zooms. And there's a fun scene where, like, a bunch of C-list superheroes get straight up murdered, which is very entertaining. But, like, the movie, nothing in it matters. Nothing that happens matters. I felt no connection to a single person on screen. A nuke could have literally gone off at any point in the movie, and I would have just been like, okay, I guess they'll finish it and, like... Avengers 97. Yeah, I've never seen you this dejected about superhero films. So this I'm, is a break. I've I've become so it makes me sad because I want to like these movies. They're these characters that I like, but like they just it's obvious that no one gives a shit. I can argue in defense of like the first few Marvel movies where regardless of what you think and regardless of like how mediocre a lot of them are, you can at least feel that the people there cared about what they were making and they at least like even if like the movie itself was like kind of bland or like the story was kind of mid like they were at least trying to like sell you on these characters and like their personalities and like these are people that you should like the the first ant-man movie is a lame movie but like at the very least you have paul rudd like who's very charming and they like write his character to be very likable but now like we're like so far into this and they aren't even trying. I'll be honest with you, even the the technical level of the movies have been lacking. Oh the CGI God. has not been that great. They've just gotten worse. The green it looks like a PS3 cutscene in a lot of ways. These movies are just getting worse and worse. It's like death by a thousand cuts. The average latest video game has better graphics than most of these movies. God of War Ragnarok is the best movie of 2022. <laughs> speaking, oh, speaking, this is a good transition yeah. because speaking of Gods of mm-hmm. War, speaking of, of, of individuals, of the of mighty beings, Thor. Oh. That movie also came out this year. Yeah, Great transition, did. Nathan. It did. That movie exhausted me. Did you enjoy it? Not, not at all. Here, here's it was I, with Natalie Portman as the main. Character. Yeah, Natalie Portman showed up as Lady Thor. Come on, Natalie, you're a great actor. Why are she, you doing MCU checks? She was not in it. You could tell by watching the movie. She just looked very confused. She's a great actor. Why? Why are you actress. in a Marvel movie, Natalie? You're a great actor. Like you starred in some great films, Black Swan, Annihilation. Stop doing this. I I don't like actors when they chase the bag. I get it. I understand, like, obviously indie films don't pay well, Mm. but MCU films, like, you can pick a big budget film with an actual director. Ah. But, like, again, (laughs) with, like, just how tired these movies are getting, like, even if you get, like, a big name, like, before it's, like, at least, like, you could tell these actors were having fun, at least, with their role of, like, flexing in the cool costume and punching the big monster. You could tell they were at least having fun early on. Now, Everyone looks exhausted. Chris Hemsworth looks exhausted. Tessa Thompson is picking up a paycheck. She's just there because she's friends with Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi, it feels like, didn't want to make this movie. From every screen, like, most of the movie is just improv dialogue that just goes on and on trying to make you laugh, but you're not laughing because it's been 20 minutes and Taika Waititi's just talking in his fun New Zealand accent. He's like, oh, Thor, I'm a big rock man. Isn't that funny? I'm going to whistle for the next 45 minutes and hope there's a joke in there. 
That's your New Zealand accent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I put about as much effort into that accent as people put into Thor Love and Thunder, the movie. It's an exhausting movie, and no one was having fun. The only person having fun there was Christian Bale as the villain. Oh, he was the villain? He was the villain, yeah. He was Gore the God Butcher, which, if I can get a little nerdy for just a second, the actual story in the comics that this is based on is like... A sweeping epic of basically Thor playing cat and mouse with this interdimensional being that is brutalizing and torturing just cosmic gods and just killing them in the most brutal ways possible. And it's just Thor always one step behind this mass murderer on a galactic scale. But then you watch the movie, he kills one guy. And, that's the problem with and then films. christian bale disappears and then it's just unfunny jokes yeah that's the, the problem with these, these these films they make it pg-13 for a wider audience they can't depict act, these actual villains to the best that they can again yeah. it's like again i didn't watch it so i, I can't really you know critique it that you much. can make a you can make an educated guess and i'd say that you're probably very correct if you just want to make a guess about the movie yeah about anything that happens in it I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm good on that. I don't want to guess. <laughs> it's a Marvel film. What am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so you didn't like uh, Thor, Love and Thunder? Or I, I did not. All right. Not I think <laughs> there's another film, another superhero film that we can also discuss. I don't know. I don't know if it's there's another one, but we'll see where it goes. Do you remember any superhero films? Superhero I don't know. Here's, here's the thing with what superhero movies were doing in 2022, because uh, Disney just went crazy trying to fill like their Disney Plus catalog with like series and so they made Moon Knight, they made Miss Marvel, they made the Hawkeye series. And I watched all of them for some reason and let me tell you, I'm dead inside. I'm dead inside now. I did not enjoy my time with these and like here's here's like my conspiracy brain going. Disney and Marvel had scripts for just a two-hour Moon Knight movie, a two-hour Miss Marvel movie, but because streaming is the big thing and they need to fill their catalog with as much garbage as humanly possible, they said, let's take these two-hour scripts, stick some filler in there, we've got a six-episode miniseries, yeah. and we're going to put it on our platform. And it's just, and you can tell that it's just a two-hour movie that was stretched. Yeah, yeah into like a six episode series all right so those, that's our superhero segment for you guys yeah right? they were all great let's get into movies that we didn't watch or mm. are gonna watch but we haven't had the chance to watch it yet because they haven't been released again we're filming this before christmas so there's a few films that are releasing christmas mm. day or like during the holidays that we both want to watch but we just haven't been able to watch because of the fact that they haven't been released. Yeah. Uh, a film that I really want to watch is Damien Chazelle's Babylon. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Damien Chazelle. I really enjoyed Whiplash. Whiplash is one of the best films of 2014, in my opinion, and one of the best films to ever be made, in my opinion, as well. I think Whiplash has a lot of great... And, and, and overall, the casting of it, Brad Pitt, Margo Robbie, he really brought out the A-listers. Tommy McGuire, another A-lister. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just very happy to see Tommy. I'm just McGuire happy to see him do well. Yeah. I, I feel like he he gets a lot of crap on him because he's like played the like the average dorky, you know, uh, Peter Parker in the 2000s, and a lot of people that's don't respect. Still the best Spider-Man. I agree with you, but again, that's because we're of that age to watch them. It's because we're fucking old timers. Yeah, we're old timers. Again, I still think that was the best depiction of Spider-Man. Uh, but overall. Uh, that's a film that I really want to watch mm. that I think will be releasing during Christmas time. Yeah. I'm excited for The Whale. The Dan Whale. Oh, Brendan Fraser's The Whale? Mm-hmm. I hear not so good things about it. Really? I hear the Rotten Tomatoes for critic reviews haven't been that great. Really? I think I got a Rotten score on it. Why? What's the I have reason? no idea. I, again, I don't, want, I don't want to be spoiled by it and I don't really listen to like, I don't really read the yeah. reviews. I just see this number. I'm like, okay, I'll sort of gauge whether or yeah. not I should watch it based off that. Uh, but yeah, I hear okay things about it. I'm like things might might cha might change mm -hmm. once it's released. Once it's released to a wider audience. I yeah. really am just excited to see Brendan Fraser in a leading role again. What's the film about? Uh it's about I think his role is like he's like an English teacher who came out as gay and he left his family to like start a life with his lover, but like the he died soon after and so he spent the rest of his time 
slowly binge eating and gaining weight. And now he's like near the end of his life and he just wants to reconnect with his daughter. And so it's obviously going to be a very like personal, like piece of drama. But like, again, I'm just excited for Brendan Fraser because like it's been too long since he's been in a movie. Yeah. So The Whale, I hear that's going to be a film that's going to be released. And Probably divisive. Divisive, yeah. Mm. And very. I, I mean, I, I think the, the the plot that he give, I don't think it's going to be that divisive. I just think that the, the way it's going to carry and, and, and mean for some people may be different. Yeah. So yeah, The Whale, uh, that's a film that we're very much interested, or he's very much interested. I'm, I'm interested in watching it as well. Uh, but overall, 2022, uh, were you a fan of the films that were released? What do you think can be done to make sure that better films are released. I think I was very because 2023, mm-hmm. by the way, has some good films that are going to be released. Yeah, I mean, you have Nolan's Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. You got Greta Gerwig's Barbie, which I just want to watch just to see. <laughs> Oppenheimer and Barbie are going to release on the same day. Yeah. That's going to be so fun. And did you watch Avatar yet? I've not watched The Way of the Water. Yeah, I mean, I I want to watch it. It's just that I I feel as if if I if I watch it. It's just not going to carry the same weight. Here's here's what I and would... I feel as if the yeah. first Avatar, I don't think it really holds up. I'm not going to lie. I feel like it it, it got press because it was it, it got great graphics and mm. it was like made for 3D. That film was yeah. made for 3D. I don't know. I have a problem with a movie that's like just advertised on like it just feels like a tech demo. Like, yeah. Look at all this technology we got. I made a four hour movie and I'm gonna make seven more. That's James Cameron talking yeah. it's like i filmed underwater it's where i live i mean he knows how to make money he, you, he knows how to make money and films that you know are I, I wouldn't say just conventional but conventional but also still doing well yeah for critics i do want to watch avatar 2 but uh because i want to be an asshole <laughs> i'm gonna wait until it's out on disney plus and then I'm going to watch it then. I won't even watch it on my actual television. I'll watch it on a laptop. Yeah. Because I want James Cameron to get like like a scratch. The way he intended. <laughs> the to be way watched he intended. on a laptop. I'm going to watch it on a laptop. I'm going to bring it into the bathroom with me and watch it while I take a shit. Okay. That's a little too graphic, but no worries. <laughs> we'll keep it in. We'll keep it in. Sorry to anyone. Who's yeah, it's it. near the end. I'm Anyways, going, going uh, the rails. overall, 2022, I'm not going to lie. Maybe it's because of the lack of movies that I watched, but I kind of felt like it was lacking compared to the 2021 films. I'm not going to lie. I feel like this year could have been better. I, f- I feel as though it's we're slowly taking strides. Slow strides, but to like better things. Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting to that moment in time where we're now looking at superhero films as westerns. Where this will surely die down sooner than later. Mm-hmm. And more original storytelling will be in effect. Yeah. I think it's not just super. I think just everyone is sick of franchises. When we see like another movie, like, like, are they like, I think they're trying to make another Conjuring or an Insidious again. I think James Wan. Yeah. I think everyone is just getting sick of these franchises and it's just like, we want something new. We want something that is just completely separate from like a pantheon of like dozens of other movies. I, I like standalone films. Yeah. I, I like films that, you mm-hmm. know, may have an ambiguous ending that doesn't care to explain it. Yeah. I enjoy films that make me want more. Yeah, exactly. Not everything needs to be explained to no. the audience. And that's what I'm hoping 2023 gives. Cause I think we saw, I think we did see a bit of it in 2022, like just like lower budget movies that stand on their own. That and, is what I'm looking for. And again, I'm not hating on sequels. I think a good sequel... I mean, you watch Pearl, right? That's our sequel yeah. next. Mm-hmm. Again, I, it's not that we hate on sequels. We just don't enjoy how how it's essentially just not even a passion project, but no. essentially a way to extract more money. It, it definitely feels like directors are just getting more and more tired when they're just put to work. It's like, make a movie! It's like, I don't know. What do you want? A sequel to Thor Ragnarok? I'll do it. Whatever. Just get Tessa Thompson in here to sit on my face. That's Taika Waititi talking. That's Taika Waititi talking. Okay. So overall, those are our thoughts on the 2022 State of the Film Address. Uh, we'll try and do some movie reviews on this channel. We'll we'll see. Obviously, it's going to vary. Uh, this is more of a thing that we just enjoy recreationally. It's not something that we want to like really 
do like each and every week that would be too much right it's too much uh but overall thank you thanks so much for watching i think that that'll be our review for today or for this year and we'll catch you next year hopefully we're still alive to see it yeah i don't know about him but uh, <laughs> we'll we'll we'll, like we'll 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 try and film a review of the 2023s hmm. slate of releases and we'll bitch and moan about superhero movies then again all right, so that's it for us. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to all my channels. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, follow him on Instagram. I don't know if he you if you still use Instagram. Yeah, so uh, Nay is thin. Nay is thin. Yeah. N a y i s t h i n. I'll put the go. link down below for you guys to follow him. And you know, if he does a podcast on himself with by himself or with his dad or whatnot, then definitely go watch it. I don't know. Are you still do a podcast with your dad? And when he needs me. When he needs you. Okay, sure. Okay, no worries. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll catch you next year, and we'll discuss more films. All right, peace. Bye.